If you're going from fuel injection to carbureted, you're going to have to dig into your fuel system. I'll show you what I'm doing. First things first, I went and rented a fuel pressure test uh, kit. You can go buy one or you can just go rent one at a local auto parts store if they have a rental there. Also, uh, get a proper amount of gas in your tank so you don't uh, run it dry. Also, you're going to need another gas can to catch excess fuel that you'll uh, be dripping off of um, pressure relief valves and whatnot. But let's take a look at the kit I borrowed. The kit I borrowed is the main gauge, a few fittings, a multimeter, a little stretch of rubber hose, some hose clamps, leads for the multimeter. And that's about it. As you see in my other videos, uh, my car's gutted. Um, everything was taken out. But if you're de testing your fuel system, yours may not be. But I'm testing it right here, right where the line's coming to the engine bay. This line is the feed line. And this is the return line. We are probably not going to uh, use the return line. We're just going to use the feed line. And that's what I'm going to be testing off of. And this is the fitting I'm going to use. Actually, correction, I might have said these in reverse. The single hose clamp um, is the feed, and this is the return. I don't remember if I said it opposite or not, but that's what it's supposed to be. Now, you need to plug off this other end. That's what I made this for. I cut off a little chunk of fuel line. It's 3 eighths. I just put a bolt in the end to plug it off and use another hose clamp when you screw it on top. Tighten it up right here and then we'll attach it to our system. Also this could be a dumb mistake. If you are going this route, um, you do not want to attach this to your turn because you'll just have all your pressure lost straight through your turn. It may seem like a dumb concept and Everyone knows, but somebody might, might not know, like, they'll not have any pressure, but they just hooked up the wrong line to the return, and you're just not getting any pressure buildup. This is mainly for going into, like, a TBI throttle by injection. But we have it all hooked up now. We have our gas can down below uh, with no pourer on it. And that's just going to be our bleed off to catch any gas that we drain out from our system. And now we're going to hook up our gauge. I'll put it right there. Pretty easy. It screws right on. I'll pop the gauge right there and put the bleed off in your tank. Even though it shouldn't bleed off until you press the button. All right, moment of truth, let's see. Must be an air bubble in there. Let's bleed it out. Looks like we're not building any pressure. Well, we had little to no air, uh, fuel pressure. So, it could be a few things. One, it could be a clogged fuel filter which I got a brand new AC Delco fuel filter this could fix the problem there is fuel going through so it's not 
completely clogged. It's just not building any pressure. Plus, um, if it was a clogged filter, it would eventually build up pressure through the fuel, fuel filter, which it's not doing whatsoever. So, even if we change the fuel pump, this may help with flow a little bit and not drag us down. And two, to deal with the fuel pressure, I purchased this AutoBest uh, fuel pump. It's actually modeled off of AC Delco fuel pumps, but it is a bit cheaper. It's a whole kit. Comes with the pump and miscellaneous hardware to help you swap it over. Instructions, which are pretty much useless if you look at them. And that's all that comes in the box. And not only that, if you're going to change the fuel pump, you're going to want a fuel screen. I couldn't get an exact answer on which strainer fits that fuel pump. I got this AC Delco, which I believe this is the correct fit. And we'll take a look, see if it is. I'll even leave um, the part numbers down in the, the description if you are swapping over from fuel injected carburetor for like an LS motor or whatnot. You'll just have to change the fuel pump. This is a pretty cheap option and it goes in the tank. Let's take a look at our pump. Right now I'm draining all the gas out of the gas tank. There's not much in there. There's about five gallons, more or less. Um, I'm going to do that just to get all the bad gas out. And then once I change out the fuel pump, I'll put fresh gas in there and then uh, go from there. But just get all the bad gas out, whatever you're not going to use, and then put it in uh, your lawnmower or something if you have a crappy lawnmower. I thought I'd show how slow this is draining out. That's how slow it's going. Practically a, practically a trickle. Let's pop it back in. Okay, these Camaro third gens are really hard to get at the fuel pump because it's at the top of the tank. You gotta drop the rear axle, then drop the tank, and make sure you don't crush any lines if you want to reuse them. Or, nine times out of ten, people cut a patch right at the top and then cut the lines right in half and then just put rubber hose to connect them both and then drop the fuel pump right back in or the whole assembly right back in which that's what we're going to do um, my hole I started right at this indent back here which is actually perfect and I went about uh, three quarters to an inch wide each side to these indents I probably could have went a bit farther up here about an inch away but this will be fine I'm going to cut it right almost center of where my lines are and then I'll be able to push the hose up as far as possible. Maybe I'll cut it a little bit farther down, push the hose up as far, far as possible, maybe use two, two hose clamps and drop it back in and we should be in business. So we're going to cut these lines and keep going. Believe it or not, I was going through many options to cut these lines. You can't get one of these in there. You can't use a cutoff wheel because you're going to throw sparks. If you got gas in there, that could be a, a big issue. So, I used one of these. It actually worked really good. It didn't uh, crimp the ends too bad. I'll be able to cut them off and probably open them back up to a tube. But it will do for now until I get the whole unit out and then I can work on them have a little bit more space but that's what I did you can do it other ways do it however you want but that's what I did and then these I'm just gonna put connectors on there go to the connections and bolt them back together or uh, connect them back together
There we go. There we go. I just zipped them up with the cutoff wheel. Let's get on with putting on our pump. I didn't take it out of the bag until I was ready to install it just because of miscellaneous dirt that'd be floating around. Just like this end. So, stick it on the bottom first. Take off our cap. Get our new uh, holding gasket. Also stick on our feed. That is tough. Grab a new clip. That ain't coming off. I hope it isn't. that all the way up. Oop. Don't forget this. That's one tough pump to get on. Oop, careful. It's like I broke it. Okay, I definitely broke this little bottom piece. But I can't see that mattering because this thing is just so damn tight on the this tube where I can't even move like this I just can't see it going anywhere I can't see it going anywhere so I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna tighten up this it's not going anywhere it'll be just fine Here's the old pump. It's tired. Oh, grab our strainer. There's the old one. Fairly close. I'm gonna put it on. Yeah. I don't think it really matters. As long as it's on. Don't forget to plug it in. There we go. Should have power. Let's go put it back in. We'll need this. You also got a these lines uh, cut and cleaned. Now we just gotta drop in our new assembly. Oh, don't forget your o-ring. Now we have a screw line. Let's cut the right length. And then uh, just use some clamps and keep it in place. Two of the lines are bigger than the other ones. I'm using 3 8 for the outside ones. Uh, the feed line closest to the um, wires, that is the main feed line. And I'm not sure which one these these are a return. I think the far outside is a vent. Um, the next one is the charcoal canister, 
and I think this one is the return thumb. I'm not 100% sure. But just use a proper size lines for these, clamp them down, and we'll check our pressure. Okay, now we got our lines hooked up. We have our gauge hooked it back up, or we didn't even take it off. Uh, we have a gas can to catch whatever gas that we're gonna like spill out through the release valve. Um, we did take the same gas and put it back in there. Um, it was still fairly clean. These are pretty clean jugs. So let me hit the electric, uh, the switch, or make the electrical connection and see what kind of pressure we get. Looks like it hits about 20 PSI. That'd be pretty good. Still running a regulator. I got this uh, quick fuel regulator. Um, we'll see how this does. Quick fuel, pretty good company. It looks just like the Hollies. I got this off Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, fairly cheap. And for the barbs, I have them here somewhere. Hey there. Morosos. You could probably use any barbs on these um, that fit the threads, but these are there, convenient. I'll use these two. I'll have to plug off uh, one of my feet out on my regulator and then just use one feet out. But that's for another day. I'll leave a link for this pump in the description. Um, it's for an end tank, swapping over from EFI to carbureted. It should have enough flow for my 6 liter LS motor, but there's only one way to find out and that's uh, to just run it. So if you want to see upcoming videos, hit the subscribe, and if uh, this is helpful, give me a like. Thanks for watching.